Hey everybody, welcome back to another Judgment Commentary of Kaguya-sama Love is War Season 2, but today we're going to be checking out Episode 2, and last time in Episode 1, things kicked off very well. It was a very nice episode to start Season 2 off with, just a whole lot of fun, lots of good times there. Started off with Hayasaka assisting Kaguya with a sabotaging mission, replacing Miyuki's coffee with some decaffeinated coffee so that when he drank it, he would fall asleep, which would leave Kaguya with some time to do... something. They didn't really specify, it looked like she was pulling out some measuring tape or something, so... I don't know what she intended to do, but either way, it didn't get to happen because when he fell asleep, he fell onto her shoulder, so... Yeah, she can't just move from that position, obviously. Hayasaka tried to buy her some time to figure out what to do, but even with all the time she bought her, she didn't really do anything. She just sat there, enjoying the moment. And the next time, I totally got faked out. I thought we were gonna get to overanalyze some fictional relationship advice, but no, because those two who normally ask for advice, they came in asking for it, but then they didn't actually ask for it. They said, hey, we could use some advice. And then it was all just so that they could troll them. For whatever reason, they decided to do a little bit of trolling on Kaguya and Miyuki, wanting to make them believe that their relationship had progressed further than they had initially believed. I don't know why they wanted to do that, not exactly being thankful for all the advice that they had given them. But despite the lack of advice for me to overanalyze, I still enjoyed that part all the same. And then everybody in the class played this new Game of Life-esque board game that Fujiwara and the rest of her class decided to put together and... Well, given that it's based on the Game of Life, you can probably imagine the kind of shenanigans that went down, involving them getting married to one another, and having like nine kids. And in the end, it was a happy ending for everybody, because Fujiwara got to get married to Kaguya. Mm-hmm. And then there was a part about them, you know, using this online fortune-telling thing. They would put in their date, and it would tell them, you know, their future and who they might be compatible with and stuff like that, and... And that just amounted to Miyuki not wanting them to punch his birthday into there because he had already done it himself previously and found out that there would be less than favorable information found within. And that was about it. All in all, really fun stuff. But now, instead of continuing to recap the episode for no reason, I'd just like to go over something weird that happened in the last episode, and it's that in the first segment we saw, you know, there was like the principal who was walking around looking at his phone, and then Hayasaka turned him away from the council room and pointed him to the gym, and in that moment, I had no freaking idea what was going on, because they had this, like, icon show with, like, a sparkle and, like, some, some, like, kissing lips, and I just, like, I had no idea what she was even saying. What's there at the gym that could be described with kissing and a sparkle? Well, apparently, according to one of y'all, the manga sheds a little bit more light about this. Apparently, in the manga, he was playing Pokemon Go. In fact, he apparently plays Pokemon Go a lot, and it was a running joke that was just cut. Sadly. But anyway, he was playing Pokemon Go, and he saw that there was a Pikachu in the student council room, and he wanted to go and catch it. And that's why Hayasaka points him to the gym, because she says that there's in fact a Pikachu at the gym, so he goes there instead. And even though the anime cut out the part about Pokemon Go, they still referenced it. Because in case you're not aware, Pikachu's name is a play on words, with Pika meaning sparkle, and Chu being the automatopoeia for a mouse sound, or for a kissing sound. Hence, sparkle, kiss. But since he had no idea he was playing Pokemon Go, how are we supposed to figure that out? Just by looking at a sparkle and a kiss? I guess it'd be easier if you were fluent in Japanese, you might see the sparkle and the kiss and automatically think, hmm, Pika, Chu, and then you'd be like, Pikachu, he's playing Pokemon Go. But even then, I don't know if that would happen, but. I guess that's the most they could do. Maybe they didn't want to show Pokemon Go due to, like, a fear of Nintendo's lawyers just coming down on them, but I don't know, kind of sad that they had to cut that, but at least they still tried to reference it as best as they could. Anyway, enough rambling. Let's begin episode two. And that was a nice one, too. Constant flow of comedic energy going through that one. <laughs> I mean, these past two have been really keeping up the momentum in that way. It's just... <laughs> it hasn't slowed down, man. And I can dig that. And man, it had been a while since we saw Miyuki try to turn the tables on Kaguya like that, you know? To try to take advantage of an opportunity to try to spin it on her and then it just get flipped right back around on him. It's It's been a bit. 
but that was one of the most clever she's been about it because she foresaw the exact scenario that he was going to try to use on her and then just flipped it right or back around on him. And in the end, poor Fujiwara didn't end up being like the, the one in the middle who, you know, saves both of them. She was a casualty of that. <laughs> Ishigami was the one who walked in and, you know, gave the advantage there. And then, hey, Kaguya did get to enjoy a nice afternoon out with Kei. She got closer to her than she expected because she wasn't trying to even use this as an opportunity to necessarily get closer to her. She was just trying to get information out of her. <laughs> she just thought that she could ask her about what presents she could buy for Miyuki, but in the end, she didn't get any information about that and just ended up being closer to her, which was her initial plan when she first met her. Hmm. And then at the end, Hayasaka actually straight up tried to say that she should, Kagi should offer herself as a present. I mean, it's like, wow, how would, how would he even respond? I've, I've asked that a couple times about things, but how would he even react to that? He would be so flabbergasted, so caught off guard, he would have no idea what to even what to even do about that. Her just standing there with a ribbon tied around her just drive him mad. And then Kaguya getting into the classic angel and devil on her shoulder situation, only uh, a little bit of a nice spin on that. It wasn't necessarily only you know, the good and evil side of her, it was the more, I guess you could say, emotional side and her more logical side if you wanted to water it down. One represented her feelings, the other represented cold, hard logic. I don't know how her child counterpart ended up being the judge of that, but... <laughs> I don't know who else could have even been available for that. But in the end, I think she found the right balance, you know? She ended up just giving him one slice of cake rather than just a whole giant one. Even a full cake when it's just the two of them would be... excessive, so... That was the right way to go about it. And then she even managed to come up with a very thoughtful present, all on her own, apparently. I mean, we didn't see if anybody helped her out with that, but... I mean, maybe Hayasaka gave her some input on it, but... <laughs> Still, it was very much, uh, well thought out, and specifically tied to him, because of all the hard work he does, you know, he works out in the heat a lot, so give him the fan, and then write that little idiom on it. Very heartwarming. But then, of course, naturally, both of them try to use that as a means of getting the other one to... confess to the other. I'd expect nothing less. So here is the idiom, uh, as it was translated right here, the worn inkstone. To devote yourself to studying to the point you drill a hole in your iron inkstone. I have, I'm not sure what that is, but... Also, a uh, double eye catch. They both ate the whole freaking cake. <laughs> and it was mostly Hayasaka. <laughs> no, all the freaking... The carbs and stuff in that. <laughs> I would just donate that to the local orphanage or something, man. But yeah, the idiom was to, to grind a hole into an inkstone with excessive use. I don't know what an inkstone is. Oh, okay. Uh, I guess something like this. <laughs> it's just, uh, uh, some, like, solidified, like, ink, and then you grind into that with this thing, and then it'll, uh, you can write with it. Cool. Uh, like, apparently it works like this. That does sound like him, though. <laughs> he works excessively hard, so yeah, it works. And she took observation of that fact. Seriously, very heartwarming set of episodes here, followed by one of the best mind games they've had yet. <laughs> and I, I love the fact that it was immediately following it. Such a great heartwarming moment of her giving him such a thoughtful gift, and then both of them immediately, the next day, using that as an opportunity to try to get the other to confess. That is just... so them. So yeah, Kaguya's feelings are overwhelming at the moment, and I'm sure Miyuki's are also, you know, going in a certain direction, but... We didn't get to see none of that. He just <laughs> immediately thinks, oh, she probably likes me. I'm going to use this right here. Now, well, good times were had by all, except Fujiwara, I guess. Well, no, she still had fun in the beginning. Just uh, by the end, she ran off crying because she was the only one there who legitimately did not know his birthday. Dang. But for now, I think that's all I got to say, guys. So, thank you for watching. Make sure to leave a like and a comment if you enjoyed. Subscribe to be updated on more. That would be great. Next time, we check out episode three. We'll see what that one has in store now that this whole Miyuki birthday arc has come to a close. Surely more lovey-dovey comedic chaos awaits on the horizon. And so far the fun has not slowed down, so I can't wait to check it out as soon as I can. But till we meet again, I will see you guys all later!